Alrighty, it's Friday. Sharp Customs. We are rolling. We're doing tonight. We're going to do a quick little airbrush tutorial. My airbrushing uh, community of people, I guess I can say, uh, have been wanting to see more stuff so I'm going to do something very simple uh, very unique maybe not unique I don't I don't really know but uh, uh, I've, I've been thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it all week long and I wanted to come up with something uh, the last few airbrushings uh, you know kind of depleted it more towards uh, you know beginner stuff and really you know doing the skull thing on the canvas and doing the lion um, I, I, don't get me wrong a beginner can do that it's just gonna take time but I wanted to show some of the more basic examples what I want to show is I want to show more uh, lines, simple stuff that you can do with scraps of paper, pieces of tape, uh, things like that. We have this piece of metal here. That's what it is. Very heavy gauge metal. I dug this out of the my back door there. There's a tent. There's a car tent back there full of junk. And I had this old piece of freaking sheet metal. And I'll show you, I'll show you what this thing looked like. Now it's got some uh, it's got some grinding marks and some texture. And this was actually the back of the piece of metal. And basically I just wanted to seal in kind of the the rust, but after I sprayed it with the spray bomb. This blue, weird blue spray bomb I had in my cabinet. I'll show you what the other side looks like. <laughs> yeah. This was actually the better side, believe it or not. But I decided after I sprayed this side blue, I thought it looked pretty cool. And it dried up pretty quick. And I thought, well, you know what? I'll just do the airbrushing on there. Um, why? Well, why not? Because we can't, you know. Uh, it's just a little airbrush tutorial. Uh, gonna try and keep this video short and sweet. I always say that. I know it. Oh, you're probably asking yourself right now, why am I wearing sunglasses? It's nighttime. You know, it's Friday night. I have this bright light here. I actually covered up part of it so we don't get too much glare uh, while I'm doing this. People always ask me, hey, what are you doing? Or how you doing? And I say, well, I'm doing good. Getting good grades. My future's so bright, I gotta wear shades. I hope you get that. But, anyhow, on to the airbrushing. I'll show you the crappy old piece of metal right here. This is kind of, this is what I cut it out of. Obviously you can see that. It's pretty, it's a pretty rusty old piece of metal. Pretty heavy gauge, I'm not sure. It's about a sixteenth of an inch thick. I was actually surprised my electric shear cut that circle out of it. But uh, I couldn't find anything else. I wanted something circular because this airbrush pitcher uh, that I'm about to show you, uh, the effect is way better if you do it on something uh, kind of circular. Uh, it's very basic. You, you will see that uh, it's in the realm of very basic airbrush techniques, but when I'm finished it, trust me, 
you will look at it. I know how the world works right now. Everybody wants the here and the now. They want to see results as fast as possible. And that's what I want to show uh, more of the beginner airbrush artists that you can you can take very basic stuff and you can create a very quick easy kind of oh wow hey that looks really cool you know and I say I get these stupid sunglasses off I put my other eyes on and we just get into it because I'm wasting your time. I know it. Let's do it. We got a quiet here in the shop. It's Friday night. Nobody's around. We got the airbrush set up. I've just got uh, just a, a base white. I've got a base white already in the airbrush. I'm, you know, I'm gonna hope. The airbrush, it, it's, it's an old, it's an old paint I had mixed up. I'm sure it'll be fine. We'll, uh, we'll deal with it if we have to. I'm going to put my glasses on, my other eyes, like I say. So to start, basically we got this kind of a blue, it's a blue metallic. It's a, it's a nice dark color. Now we're not going to go... We're not going to go halfway. So what I call this picture is, I call this picture ground effects. Okay. Now, uh, I learned this, I think when I was about 18 or 19 years old, many moons ago. I'm going to stick the tape on. Let's see. We're going to go, we're just going to guess it. We're not going to. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just gonna kind of do that. Yeah, it looks pretty good. We can we can turn it if we have to. So basically, what we're gonna create here is we're gonna create a horizon line. <clears throat> gonna take the airbrush. Airbrush is not really working. To my expectations. I think I know why. I'm thinking that my hole. Nope. Nope. I'm just gonna do a quick quick adjustment here. There we go. That's a little better. That's a little better. I think my white paint is a little bit thick. It should be okay. Should be okay for the video. I'm just gonna take a scrap piece of paper. I guess some scrap pieces of paper here. And basically, I'm just gonna block. I don't wanna get over spray up here yet. I just want the horizon line. That's really all I want, just the horizon line. And you'll see when I pull the uh, when I pull the tape off. Yeah, you can do that. You can drag your piece of paper across if you want. We don't have to have it too bright. <clears throat> so I'm going to pull this piece of tape off. You'll see a nice bright, straight white line. Keep that piece of tape because I'll probably reuse that piece of tape. Now we want we want a center point. I'm just gonna pick. It doesn't have to be 
it doesn't have to be dead center of anything. You could put it over here, you could put it over there. It really doesn't matter where you put it. Uh, I choose to, uh, you know, I choose them around, kind of around the middle. You know, it gives, it gives a better effect. And you'll see what I mean. Now I'm using a automotive base paint. Uh, dries pretty quick, uh, so I can kind of manipulate kind of what's going on here. Now I can see a little bit, I got a little bit of overspray above my piece of tape. Now, if that's our light source right there, let's take a just a ripped piece of paper. <clears throat> let's create some silhouetted mountains. So basically, yeah, I don't know, something like this. And we're just going to create these like this. Oh, look at that. Does that not look cool? Does that not look cool? Like, look at, look at that. Take your same piece of paper, move it up a bit. You can do whatever you want. You can, uh, oh, do we get this like silhouette mountain? We've got our horizon line. We've got the mountains. Um, you want to get super creative? Here, how about this? Let's use a different, the other side of the rip paper. We don't want to, uh, I don't want to make things to look the same. We'll do it a little bit lighter. A little bit lighter. Oh, there we go. There we go. They don't have to follow. Like I did the first one there, how it followed up. They don't have to follow. You could start down below. Look at this. Check this out. It can start down below. There we go. Look at that. We got we got multiple kind of mountain tops. I guess you could say you could do more. You don't have to get too carried away. You can come in. You kind of high, highlight it a bit. You can. It doesn't really matter because you know what? It's your. It's it's your painting. Or painting. Let's go the other side. Let's do this side. So I'm not get too crazy yet. When this is all done, you're going to be totally amazed at the effect uh, that you created. You know, doing this. You're going to be like, oh wow, that's crazy. You don't want to just take your template and drop it down because everything will look the same. You always want to be kind of moving it around a bit. You know, you know, move it around a bit. That way it's not always, uh, it's not kind of always, you know, following suit. And look at that. You can put dagger strokes. You can pull this one. You can pull this one. Okay, I'm trying to pull it. You can pull it down. A little dagger stroke. Would we'll dagger stroke this one. You want everything in that center. Remember, you always want everything in that center point. Uh, we want to keep that subtle at the moment. You can brighten it up later. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of work. I'm going to do a little bit of work down below. So basically what I'm going to do down here is I'm going to use my center focal point and I'm going to do what they call a grit. I'm going to do a grit. Okay, let's get this up out of the way. I'm going to use paper because I don't want both sides of the tape. 
Um, I'm going to say my light source is coming from my, my left. So these I'm going to keep pretty, I'm going to keep pretty subtle. I'm not going to do, I'm not going to go overkill on them. This is a lot of, uh, I'm going to let you know right now it's a lot of uh, masking, unmasking. You could use multiple layers of masking tape. So basically now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just move this. I'm going to keep my center point in that center. And then move over. I'm just going to do it randomly. I'm just using... Too sure what's going on with the airbrush. Airbrush is, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's playing games with me here. Check this out. Check this out. Check this out. Pull the needle out, and it's creating bubbles. Telling me something is plugged. Something is plugged up here in the front of the airbrush, or it is possible that. Okay, that wasn't good. That wasn't good. You got, you got to see it. I just took the tip off, and it fell on the floor, and I have no idea. Where it went. Oh, I see it. I see it. I see it. We got lucky here. Now, the tip could be... The nozzle tip could be a little plugged up. It happens. It happens. Not sure what is going on with this airbrush. It's really weird. Look at it bubbling in there. It's bubbling like freaking crazy. Uh, have I encountered this before? Well, obviously, yes, I have. I have encountered this. Sometimes it's just a case of... Taking a knife, I really did not want to be doing this, but we're sharp customs. You know, we're raw, we're shooting it in the moment, you get to see it, and uh, you know what? Sometimes this stuff happens. Sometimes things just don't go the way you plan them to go. You know, I could videotape this and I could edit all this crap out and no that's not what I want to do I want you to I want you to see it you know I had a you know I got some weird stuff going on here with my airbrush it's a little bit of a malfunction and I'm gonna try it one last time look at that you see that you see that it's spraying it's spring. Great. Let's carry on. Let's carry on. So, I think basically what happened there is my paint dropped my cap on the floor. It's all dirty now. I kind of need it. I'm going to put it back on anyway. I think the paint is just so thick. I should have thinned it out earlier prior to videotaping. We'll deal with it. We're just going to carry on here. We're going to carry on because 
you know, that's what we do. I think the paint, yeah, I should have probably prior to uh, doing the video, should have probably checked my equipment. We're going to keep these roughly about the same. We're going to always use that that center that center focal point right there. We're always going to use that. We're going to try and keep it as, as centered as possible. Now this stuff doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be that precise. And as you can see what I was saying earlier, you know, it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of masking, unmasking. But trust me, in the end, when you see it, I'm gonna try and just burn through this stuff as quick as I can because I wanted to keep this airbrush tutorial. I wanted to keep it kind of short, sweet, to the point. We're just, uh, you know, we're just using uh, very basic, very basic things here. You know, pieces of paper, some masking tape. Uh, basically, we just we get a dark background color. Uh, you could use black. Black works great. Okay. Now, I don't know if you can see it on the video camera, but I can already kind of see what's taking shape here. I don't know if the viewers, I don't know if you viewers can see it. Hopefully you can already see what's taking place here. It is, I don't care, it's a very cool, it's a very cool effect. I wish I could move faster, you know, everybody wants to see the, everybody wants to see the end results. It's like, come on, come on Sharpie. Get there. Get to the end. Let us see. Let us see what it what you know what it's all about. And it's like, oh, I wish I could do it, but I'm just gonna have to take my time here. I want that center focal point. Uh, I'm not measuring anything. You know, I'm just uh, I'm gonna shorten up this piece of tape. Get this piece out of my way because it's covered in wet paint. And you could most certainly do this with a, uh, you know, if you're uh, spraying Createx, you know, the auto airs, you can do exactly the same thing. <clears throat> you can do exactly the same thing, almost any paints, acrylics, uh, you know, whatever. I'll do this one. Make sure our edges, our edges down. I'm gonna try and try and keep my arm out of the way. I know it gets in the way, but sometimes that's just the way it is. Things get in the way. Got one more, and then we'll move on. We'll move on to the next, the next focal point. I think you'll like it. I know you'll like it. These are very, uh, very subtle lines. Like it, I've always, uh, I learned. I shouldn't say, you know, it's not my, not my motto. Uh, I learned years and years ago. I, I hope you, I hope you. Kind of see what's going on here. So I'm gonna take a fresh piece of tape. I'm gonna rub it. See this? Look at this. Just a little trick. Just a little trick. I hope you get it. Basically, I'm just rubbing it through my fingers. 
And basically, I'm just, I'm taking out the real heavy stick of the tape. I'm just kind of downing, you know, how much the tape sticks. I want it to stick, but I don't want it to stick too much. I don't, all these white lines I just put on there, if I stuck a fresh piece of tape on there, it possibly could pull some of that white paint. And the idea is get rid of a little bit of the tack. Um, now, I'm wearing track pants. They're pretty dirty. They're dusty. You could stick it on your jeans the only to take away some of the tack. The only problem with that is uh, you could get lint, little hairs, blah, blah, blah. So now I'm going to go like this. like this right here. I'm just going to guess it. There is no rhyme. There is no reason. Oh, boo. Boo, you're supposed to stay there. Let's stick it just a little bit better. There we go. Same thing. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm not too worried about uh, which way the color here goes, whether it's on the top or it's on the bottom of the tape. I could do it on the bottom of the tape. Uh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to kind of go for it. Because it's just subtle. It's very subtle. It's just to put the line there. And you'll see when I pull the tape, you'll see it. Hopefully, yeah, there we go. Now, the objective here is to always go just a little bit more than the last one. And like I say, they don't have to be perfect. Because it's the illusion. It's That's what it is. It's an illusion. It's an effect. Okay? And I want, I want you to know that. It's just an illusion. It's an effect. Doesn't have to be bright, doesn't have to stand out. It's just to get, literally get the line there. And that's why I'm gonna go just a little bit further because that's the thing. That's the trick behind this is everything you do from this center focal point, you want to move everything outward. That's the illusion. You wanna know the trick behind what I call ground effects. That's just what I call it. I don't know why I call it that. That's just what I call it. You want everything to move from the center out and get larger and get bigger. And we're, you know, I, I want to move along as quick as I can because I don't want to bore the shit out of you. But, boo there but we'll deal with it it's not a big deal you get a little little sputter from the airbrush it happens it's not a big deal okay so we've got our ground what I call the ground grit now you could come in with some black and you could blacken out what I would consider your your mountains so you got to see the torn paper doing the mountains. We've got our center light source. We've got our makeshift grid. Now I don't know if you can see it. I can already see it. It's drawing me to the center. It's kind of an optical illusion. It just pulls you to that center point. Now we can get really creative and really simple stuff. What we're going to do is we're going to just take the airbrush with the white and I'm going to put, watch this, I'm just going to put itty bitty, look at this, I'm going to put itty bitty art. 
Remember, the whole thing is arc. We're gonna put an itty bitty. We're gonna put an itty bitty star there. Okay. We're gonna move out just a wee bit from our center point, our center focal point. We'll come up here. And the more and more you do this, obviously, and now direction, as far as whether you do the top side, or you do the bottom side, or you do this side, or that side, I, you know what? I don't think it really matters. Okay, I come over, I don't know, I'll come up here. Now remember what I was saying. Remember, you're arcing. I gotta show you, you're arcing. You're always arcing when you do these. They don't have to be, they don't have to be perfect, they don't have to be spot on, because basically, you're giving, you're giving a bit of an illusion. You can do multiples, you, you know, you wanna get in super, you know, we can go, you know, we can do stuff like this. You know, they don't, they don't have to be the star with the straight edges and stuff. You know, you can just do whatever you want. You know, we can come over, we got one there. I don't know, you can just do it, do it randomly. Come right to this outside. another one similar to that I hope you can all see what I'm kind of going for here this little baby this little baby in here now my airbrush is acting up again I'm gonna put just a slight just a slight line pencil on there the idea is you always work, you always work from the center, you work from the center out, and you make everything just a little bit larger, just a little bit larger. Now, that looks pretty cool, we got some stars, we got some mountains, you could add some black, uh, you could add other colors. You could haze over this bottom grid, uh, you know, with a deep purple, a, a nice metallic purple or something like that. That's pretty cool. Now we're going to do something else. We're going to get into something else. If you didn't want to do stars, well, heck, piece of paper, I already cut them out. We're just going to basically do this. We're going to go... We're just going to put a sphere. How about that? We're going to put one there. We're going to put one out here. Let's do another one around the same size. I don't know. We'll put it here. You don't have to go all the way around. Remember that. You don't. You just don't. We could do a half. How about that? You get super creative. Now, I'm hoping that you can all see the illusion. How you are drawn. You're drawn to that center focal point. Because everything moving away from the center focal point starts out small and becomes larger. It's kind of a cool concept. It's very easy. It's a very cool picture. Um, I don't know, we can, we can, you can get creative with your spheres if you want. 
you could come in. Like I say, my airbrush is acting up a bit. We can do this little weird little. You can do the little double. You know, you do the little double. You can do the what they call the. Uh, yeah, my paint is most certainly a little thick. A little thick tonight. I got some sputters. Yeah, it's not working for me, but you could do like a double line. Instead of just a just a swooping line, you could do a double line. Uh, how many spheres you want to do? Well, heck, I've got a template here. We can even get creative. I got it taped off, so I've only got. I'm gonna come in tight. I'm just gonna do a little one there. I like the spheres. I don't know what it is. I like the spheres. I wish I had, I, I should have done one just a wee bit bigger. The spheres look pretty cool. But as you can see, what it does is because you're doing larger stuff around the outside and you're doing smaller stuff in around the center section, you can see that it gives this kind of a optical illusion and it pulls you in towards the center. And uh, you know, uh, I've done these things in purple and white with a little bit of black. Now I could grab another airbrush and I could fill this in black and then come back over it with my, you know, with my templates. Now, what else could you do with this? Well, you know, maybe if I didn't do quite as many spheres, I could have put some clouds up here. I could have put some clouds up here and some little lightning bursts. Um... I'm not going to do that. Uh, you've seen me practice that stuff before on, you know, whatnot, other materials, other pieces of work. I got to take a step back. I got to have a look at it. I think it's pretty cool looking. It's very basic. I know that. But this is for people who want to play around with just basic uh Basic tools, you know, pieces of paper, some tape, you know, get yourself oriented to uh, how your airbrush works. You got to see how my airbrush didn't work properly tonight. My paint is just, uh, it's a little bit thick. It is clogging up the tip a wee bit, you know, that's, uh, that's my own fault. You know, should have, uh, prior to shooting the video, I should have, uh, Probably did a little bit of practice, but uh, yeah, I don't normally do that. I just pick it up, dump some paint in it, you know, whatever's pre-mixed, and away I go. It is a little thick. I can see it's very bright. Very bright. Do a little bit of sputtering. Circles. There you go. You know, don't forget. Circles. Dagger strokes. You know, you all watch me do the, the fur on the tiger. Tiger? Lion. White lion. Blue eyes. So, there you have it. We took this rusty old piece of metal. Uh... Put some shitty old blue metallic paint on it just to kind of seal it up. Um, what I will do with this, I don't know, probably just hang it on the wall. This is something I did a long time ago. Many, you know, I'm talking probably more than 30 years ago. It was just something I did. I actually did one of these, believe it or not, on a 4x8 sheet of plywood. Had the grid. Uh, did the grid in kind of a green? Uh, did the bubbles in pool ball colors? Yellow, purple, blue, 
red, brown, and it got framed and it actually got put in somebody's man cave beside their pool table. Actually looked pretty cool. Now I did not put the numbers on it, but all the bubbles or spheres matched, you know, kind of a pool table type theme, did a dark trim border around it. It was actually a pretty cool little project. And that was, I did hundreds of this style picture back when I started airbrushing, when I was like 18, 19 years old. And I just wanted to show people because that gives you a quick here and now type of picture that you can do with, uh, you know, like I say, some ripped pieces of paper, a little bit of tape, you know, get yourself a scalpel knife or X-Acto knife, you know, you can use anything to make circles. That circle, I actually used this roll of tape, drew a pencil line, used my knife, cut it out. That's how easy it is. There you have it. That is our airbrush tutorial video, more beginner style. Um, as far as the paints, like I say, I've gone over that. Uh, I should have probably reduced my base white just a little bit more tonight. Uh, just so I sprayed a little nicer, didn't clog up my gun. But those things happen. You got to see it. So, for now, Sharp Customs, share, like, subscribe. We're rolling out. Thank you to all my new subscribers. And peace. I'm out.